Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on the live Q&A every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live from Michigan. Thanks for joining me. Let's jump right in. All right, so I managed to do that opening uh, without too much uh, ado. Worked out okay. Grand Illusion, thanks for joining me. Uh, Fahad Bishi. Hi, I'm glad to see you. Celtic FC fan. Hi from Michigan. Cool. Uh, RP Paseno. All buckled in and ready to go. <laughs> I think we've been talking, haven't we? Uh, via email. Uh, there are some other Michiganders that are uh, uh, viewers who are close to me. And that, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the best streams on YouTube right here. Good to know. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, go back over here to our on-screen demo. And uh, I've got this camera set up so that uh, we can do this business. I think that's pretty clear, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to try to do that whenever we're dealing with the ledger. Uh, because that way I don't have to flip screens back and forth. So we'll try that out tonight if uh, we deal with the ledger. Uh, let's jump into the news. Uh, before I get too much further, uh, I'd like to point out or I, that I noticed after the stream last week that there was one particular viewer that was uh, a little perturbed that I was droning on and on without uh, checking uh, for questions. And uh, he said something to the effect uh, of, I thought this was a Q&A, and he's just talking. So I uh, committed myself to try to keep it more in a Q&A this week. I know there are certain weeks where there's some, I'm excited, and there's lots of stuff that I need to move around, and I figure it's a good time to demo, but sometimes maybe I get caught up a little too much in that and uh, don't uh, respond to questions. So I'm gonna try to be responsive tonight. Uh, Chase in greets from Wisconsin. That's good. Uh, Juan Zayas, hola, back to you. Dro Kilo, hey Crypto Dad, could you possibly go over Casino Coin and also how to store it, please and thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I generally try to avoid talking about individual coins. Um, it, it's just that people are always asking me about individual coins. Uh, and if they're a coin that I've never heard of. But uh, you're the first question, so uh, more power to you. Let's find out what Casino Coin is. Casino Coin, is that one word? All right, the gateway to the future of gaming. All right, so uh, someone says, hey, what about Casino Coin, right? Well, let's, uh, first of all, let's check their website, see what that's about. All right, that's all well and good. Now let's uh, delve a little more into what this coin actually is, all right? So we can do that uh, sort of on coin market cap, but I tend, if I'm just checking out a coin, I like, uh, uh, coin gecko uh, coin market you can check their chart so let's let's go ahead and do that all right so here it is on coin market cap it's worth uh, way less than a penny okay so it's basically a penny stock in, in that sense of it and sense of the word so as opposed to a blue chip we're talking a penny stock that's worth uh, not very much all right, so uh, it's kind of a gamble when, uh, at, but you know, hey, if I got a hundred bucks and I wanna uh, throw it into casino coin, I could hit big, right? But we don't wanna take 10 grand or 20 grand and drop it into something this cheap. I, I'm just going by its price. That's all I'm going by right now. Uh, ranked as 259. All right, uh, so let's look at its circulating supply, quite high. All right, so what is this? Uh, hundreds, thousands, millions, 
No, wait a minute. Let me check it. Let me check it. Uh, thousands. This is 480,000. This is 144 million. So we're at 39 billion. All right. So let's look at uh, other cryptocurrencies and see how they stack up uh, circulating supply wise. Okay. So uh, Bitcoin, 17 million. Uh, it will hit 21 eventually. All right. So uh, sort of low, uh, a high circuit, casino coin is a high circulating supply compared to Bitcoin. Now, but let's look at XRP. We've got 43, is that billion, right? Thousands, millions, I'm having trouble with numbers tonight. All right, so 43 billion uh, for XRP. And what were we looking at here? 39 billion. All right, so uh, less uh, than XRP. Uh, Tether, of course, is in the trillions. Uh, Cardano is in the billions, the 25 billion. Tron is 66 billion. So there are some comparable coins with similar circulating supplies. But in general, that's a pretty high circulating supply. So when you've got a coin with that high of a circulating supply, uh, you're not going to see huge moves in... in the huge moves aren't going to make that big of a difference because the, the the supply is so watered down. All right. And this is just looking at the price and the circulating supply. That's all we've done right now. Right. And we've looked at its rank. It's 259. My uh, sound advice, if you can call investing in cryptocurrency sound at all, is usually... Uh, Stick with the top 20. That's my uh, safe and secure advice, right? So we're dealing with a coin that's ranked 259 out of, you know. But that's not horrible. There are thousands of cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, so 259 is not horrible. Now let's look at its chart and see how long it's been around, right? So we're looking at the all chart here, and we can see that uh, the chart starts in uh, mid-February of 2018. All right, so it's been around more than a year now, so that's not horrible. Uh, some coins that people ask me about, we look at their all chart, and it's, you know, it's a few months old, right? So, and we don't know, uh, you know, if it's more than just an idea and it's off the ground or not, right? But we can scroll down a little bit and look here, and they'll tell you, explain a little bit uh, what it's about, right? The last known price, all that kind of stuff. And then we can also look at uh, CoinGecko.com, right? We uh, checked that. Where, where were we? Here? Yeah, CoinGecko.com can tell you uh, a little more about the coin, maybe. It's got charts. And it can also tell you where to buy it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that you can buy this coin on crypto.com. Um, it's just a sponsored platform. So I don't know if you can buy casino coin on El Toro or crypto.com. I think they're just kind of on there. Uh, so, But otherwise, we're not looking at a lot of cryptocurrencies yeah, where you can buy a coin like this. So uh, high risk coin. Maybe a big reward coin, but uh, pretty small potatoes at this time, right? So, uh, and that's just an overview of the coin. I have no idea how to store this coin. Uh, I don't know uh, if it's an ERC-20 token. Uh, it usually will tell you that on coin market cap. Let's see if it's a, it's a coin, right? So it's not an ERC-20 token. So we got to figure out uh, how to store this thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, download wallet. Okay, so they have their own desktop-based wallet. And uh, you can learn a lot more about the coin on their website. So, uh, but from what I can see at this point, uh, you would need to download their wallet to store it. Wherever you happen to buy it, you download this wallet. It looks like it would probably be a desktop wallet. Uh, old token and mobile wallets. Uh, okay, so they got an iOS and Android, so you can store it on your phone. Uh, huh. 
So is it a, a standalone app? Okay, it's a standalone app where you can buy and sell. And I'm assuming that they've got some kind of thing where uh, they also host some kind of gambling, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, gambling has been notorious for, yeah, everybody wants to gamble. Uh, it's going to shoot to the moon someday. But it also runs into a lot of regulatory hurdles because gambling uh, has to be licensed in the U.S. And if it's not licensed in the U.S., then uh, it might get blocked or shut down. And so God only knows uh, gambling is a little bit shaky in my. Now, I know you can gamble. There's a lot of gambling uh, sites that do very well. Uh, so, you know, uh, but that's just my take. So there. I talked about the coin. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, um, hmm. Oh, they're in a partnership with XRP. Okay. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't run across that as we were uh, going through any of this. But, uh, let's say, uh, Casino Coin XRP. All right, uh, news. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, XRP Casino Coin. Let's try it that way. All right. All right. Well, I can't find anything about that. Uh, we could try Ripple. Oops. Um, okay. Okay. Casino coin is November 22nd, 2017. Uh, okay. Hmm. What do they say about casino? Okay. It's sort of designed to be regulated gaming uh, for the regulated gaming industry. It's recorded the most gain against the US dollar on the trading day. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Ah, well, it was up pretty high the other day, looks like it. When was this article from? Uh, April. Okay. So uh, I'm having trouble finding recent articles about this coin. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on uh, to the news. And uh, the title that I've uh, chosen is The Binance US is Coming Soon. So uh, let's see, here we go. So this is the latest with Binance. Now, uh, Binance.com uh, supposedly was blocked on September 12th, right? Uh, and so we can try to log into Binance tonight and see what happens. Uh, but this article is saying that they're planning on rolling out uh, Binance US site next week uh, on the September 18th, right? And they'll be onboarding accounts and deposits and trading will commence later at an undisclosed date. So uh, I'm going to try to register uh, for this Binance US on September 18th and see how much headway I make. Uh, they may be looking for whales that are depositing huge amounts. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to assume that there's going to be a pretty heavy KYC, know your customer uh, procedure. Where I'm going to have to, you know, present my ID and my selfie and all that good stuff to get uh, verified, validated or whatever. It might happen right away. It might take a few days. It's hard to say. Uh, there might be a lot of interest in this. There may not be that much interest in it. We'll find out. But uh, Binance, uh, they're the big boys in the cryptocurrency realm. So... Uh, Probably something we should check out at least. All right. And I'll try to log into Binance in a little bit. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, this is an interesting story here. Um, if it'll pull up, it's probably a tab already. The non-custodial exchange KyberSwap launches Fiat to Crypto Gateway. So uh, if you're not familiar with a uh, non-custodial exchange, it's generally uh, a website where you can uh, buy and sell cryptocurrencies uh, and or swap, whatever you want to think about it. 
Um, and they're non-custodial means that you're trading out of your own wallet and they're generally using an Ethereum smart contract to conduct the trades. So basically, uh, the, the trade doesn't actually, pardon me, the, the, the trade doesn't actually go out until you've uh, authorized your device, right? So you log in like, like with a ledger, you log in and then uh, you, you log in using your wallet and then when you see a trade, uh, you need to sort of release some of your funds to the trading bot and make your trade. And then after you've gotten your new token, you can store it back in your wallet. Uh, and so what this means is it's not centralized, right? It's not like uh, Coinbase or uh, Binance or Bittrex where they're, you know, they possess the liquidity. They have the stable coins and the the huge deposits where they can, you know, be market makers or whatever the heck they do on centralized exchange. This is a non-custodial type trading environment where you'll put up a trade. You'll say, okay, I want to trade two Bitcoin for whatever. And they, the, the, it goes out and finds another person out there that wants to sell uh, whatever you're after, right, for that amount of Bitcoin. And then it's kind of, you, you guys hook up and it's decentralized, right? So, uh, and th there's quite a few of them. Shapeshift, uh, KyberSwap, uh, Ether Delta, uh, was, they're similar. Uh, now, uh, this one is introducing a fiat to crypto gateway. So, um, you're able to use your own money from a credit card or a uh, debit card to purchase directly in this platform, on this platform. Right? And they're partnering up with uh, another company that actually supplies, uh, where is it, CoinDirect. All right? So CoinDirect is another company that has their own kind of cryptocurrency exchange. And they're the ones that are going to be allowing people to trade fiat for whatever. So that's pretty big news. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, this is kind of a big story. Uh, we all remember CryptoKitties, which uh, almost brought the Ethereum network to its knees in late 2017. It is a digital app, a decentralized app running on the Ethereum blockchain where people could purchase uh, digital kitties and with certain traits, colors, whatever, and uh, as collectibles, and then they could trade them, they could even breed them to create a better crypto kitty, and then, uh, you know, trade with others and whatnot. So uh, it was wildly popular at the time. So they're still around, and uh, the, the company has uh, decided to form their own blockchain, and uh, the blockchain is called... I lost it here. I think I have a tab here. Flow Chain. All right. So this is the company that's going to be involved. Uh, this new uh, blockchain-based uh, Internet of Things company. Uh, all pretty avant-garde, cool kind of stuff. So, uh, but the interesting thing is is that their uh, the music industry is involved in this. So it's kind of big business news that these uh, music people are being are involved in this blockchain based company. So that uh, can give us some more exposure uh, to the, uh, you know, the mainstream. All right. Pretty cool stuff. And let's see where are we at here. Um, now I saw this story and it kind of jumped out. Me study reveals how long it really takes to make a profit on Bitcoin. I thought this, th thought this was kind of, kind of funny. Somehow they did some kind of analysis, which said that it takes, uh, 1335 days or three years and eight months, uh, to make a hundred percent profit on Bitcoin. All right. Uh, which is interesting because Bitcoin is up 100% year to date. So if you bought Bitcoin at the beginning of the year, 
you have realized a 200% uh, gain in your holdings. So why would they say that it takes three years and eight months to get a 100% profit on Bitcoin? I, I don't know. It was just kind of a weird study that was done. And, you know, and it's all it's funny how people, you know, throw on a lab lab coat. So you'll listen to them. I don't know. Uh, you know, they, they say it's a study and it makes people think that like they're, you know, a bunch of guys in a lab. I don't know. Perhaps it was a very detailed and very uh, scientifically rigorous study for all I know. Uh, I'm just not that. I just don't quite understand the conclusion that it takes this long. And it's basically a Bitcoin bashing article to a certain extent. You know, there's a lot of them out there. They've they, they're always bashing Bitcoin in one form or another. And then uh, last but not least, there's just this one little story. Uh, Mark Cuban says he hates Bitcoin. Uh, he, he sees gold and Bitcoin as being the same thing. OK, so that's the statement there. And I guess that's positive, right? It, it equates Bitcoin to gold. And then he goes on down to say, where is it that he says? Oh, uh, the Shark Tank investor said uh, he hates Bitcoin with extreme prejudice and that hate isn't a strong enough word. And then he goes on to say, where is that? Ah, no, 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 no. He went even further than that. But he does point out that Bitcoin has a finite supply and they're always going to keep mining more gold. Interesting take right there. Uh, but even though he hates it, he still owns some. So he owns Bitcoin and has invested in other cryptocurrencies. So it's kind of a weird article. Sounds positive, goes negative, sounds positive again, goes negative again. Who knows uh, now? But the interesting thing that he says, it's it's still very much of a gamble, which I agree with. You know, cryptocurrencies are a gamble to a certain extent. Even Amazon was a gamble back in the day. It's easy to look in hindsight. You know, I should have bought Amazon, but you never know. Amazon may not have made it. Uh, you know, there are other uh, Internet based companies that did not. Toys.com, I guess, was one of them. Uh, but. Uh, if you're a true adventurer and you really want to throw the Hail Mary, you might put 10% and put in Bitcoin or Ethereum. But if you do that, you've got to pretend you've already lost your money. That's a really good philosophy when you're investing. Uh, if, if, it wants, if you believe in it and you want it to be a long-term investment, then just put it in there and forget about it and just uh, treat it as if you lost it, right? So you're not worrying about it every day. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I'm going to be responsive to you guys. There are a couple things I might do. Uh, I might not. But we'll see. Uh, thanks. Good generals. If you look at any coin, that's right. And then, of course, do your... Uh, that was just a, a five-minute survey of what that coin was about. You would want to do much more uh, personal uh, invest, uh, ed, research if you're going to actually you know, make a major investment in something like that. If you decide to throw a hundred bucks at it, fine. But it, you know, if you're going to take your nest egg and uh, gamble it on something like that, you really want to do your due diligence, right? Find out more about what their business model is about. Maybe look on their web page. Try to find out who's involved, how many employees, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, hey, Scott's here! Yay! Almost did bring ETH to their knees. Uh, how can you... <laughs> okay. Put your arm out. I put my arm out. All right, no, from me. All right, all right, like this. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here, okay, come do it here. Three, two, one. No, my wrist over here. There you go, harder. There, whoa, look at that. <laughs> But it looks white because I got a green screen on here. Wait, wait, wait. Show them. See? Yeah, that's cool. Thank you, my friend. All right. <laughs> it's like one of those wrist things. Uh, okay. So the question is, 
How can you confirm that your crypto is actually stored on your ledger other than seeing it on Ledger Live? Uh, I guess what he's asking is why doesn't it like just, why can't you read your balance from the device? You're not the first person to ask me this question. Um, so uh, you cannot read your balance on the device. Now sometimes uh, with the, you get a lot more information from the X than you do with <laughs> than you do with the Ledger Nano S. The Ledger Nano S has a smaller screen. The X has a bigger screen and it tends to give you more information. Like uh, when you send a transaction, it might say, here's the fee, uh, here's uh, the, the amount you're sending and that kind of stuff. But there is no way to just do a raw balance read from the device. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, how do I know that the crypto is on there? Uh, other than, well, I mean, other than Ledger Live. I can send it out somewhere else. Like I've moved crypto into it. And then at other times I've moved it off of it. And so that gives me confidence that the crypto is stored on this device and that I have access to it, if that makes any sense to you. I have uh, experience that has taught me that uh, when I move crypto in there and I read my balance and then when I move it off of there, I get that same crypto out, right? So uh, let's say I have all of it. Uh, I have a, uh, let's say I have 0.5 Bitcoin stored on my ledger and then I decide I want to move it over to a cryptocurrency exchange and then I move it off and then I sell it. Then that's an experience that's told me when I put uh, crypto on that ledger, it's in there, and then when I take it off and the, the exchange says, okay, I got your 0.5 Bitcoin minus fees or whatever, that, that gives me confidence that I am actually storing the cryptocurrency on this device. Now, uh, <laughs> let's qualify that though. Class, we know that we're not really storing cryptocurrency on this device. All of our cryptocurrency is stored on the blockchain. What we are storing on this device are the private keys that control those wallets. Wallet is basically a location within the blockchain ledger. The blockchain ledger is uh, stored on multiple computers spread across the world. Every computer that's running a Bitcoin node uh, updates itself based on all of the other transactions that have uh, gone on. So when a new block is created, uh, all of the other blocks tend to, and it gets added to the blockchain, all of the other nodes are constantly querying for new blocks. They discover that block and then they add it to their record of the blockchain, right? So we know that, uh, and that Bitcoin uh, that's stored on that blockchain, there's several, there's addresses on there and my private key that's on here allows me access to a Bitcoin address that I can move crypto out, right? Now, if I just wanna look at a balance on the Bitcoin blockchain, all I need to know is the public address of that uh, wallet, and I can see it. I don't need anything special to do that. Anybody can look at anybody else's public address on the blockchain, and that shows your transactions. The, the private key is the part that gives you the power to actually spend it or move it or send it out, right? And I have, I, I'm confident that when I store my private keys on here and then trust my value to this device, then uh, I know it's there and I know it works, right? But I, I don't know, the question may have been, why can't I see the balance on the device? And it would be kind of cool if you could do that. Uh, they may add that because a lot of people have asked me that. Hey, how come I can't just press a button on this device and go to my Bitcoin wallet and have it pop up and say, hey, you got three Bitcoin in there. Why not? Uh, it's just not designed to do that yet. Right. It, it's paired with that Ledger Live software for a reason. Right. OK. Ledger trustworthy. <laughs> OK. Uh, I just set up an Electrum personal server today. If you got Bitcoin Core and a hardware wallet, you should look into it. Not too difficult. Interesting. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Um, hmm. I don't know why that got blocked out. Uh, ripple. Okay, okay. Okay, Dr. Uh, Dro Kilo is uh, still talking about uh, casino coin, and he told me that I should go to a tab. Uh, what is Ripple is utilizing Ripple's source code? What is Ripple CC is utilizing Ripple's source code? Uh, okay. Frequently asked questions. Okay. Uh, tab. Frequently asked questions. All right. I don't see frequently asked questions. Okay. Casino. Exchanges, charts, social developer, historical widgets, frequently asked questions. Questions uh, available supply. Okay. All right. This is why I usually don't talk about coins because it just never ends, right? Okay. Uh, sir, learned a lot regarding Nano X. Let, thank you. It's a request. Can you please help me to transfer BTT BitTorrent token to my Ledger Nano X? Okay. Um, if you want to store BitTorrent on your Ledger, then uh, you'll need to store it in a Tron wallet. You can use uh, Tron website to view a Tron balance on a Ledger Nano X. And then you can send BitTorrent coin to that wallet okay so you cannot view BitTorrent in there's no BitTorrent app for the ledger uh, there's no uh, let me show this guy I don't know why it's he's asked this several times okay all right so this kind of gets into the whole thing about how do I store a coin on this okay so um, like I said, if you want to store a coin, first you got to check to see if it's supported uh, in Manager, right? And let me take that guy off and put this guy on. Okay. All right. So let's woo. Let's, get that. let's try this, right? All right. So uh, we need to allow Ledger Manager on the device in order for this screen to finish, right? So there's always a little bit of confusion when people look at the screen, right? I'm pointing. Right. We're looking at our computer screen. What does the computer screen say? Navigate to the dashboard on your device. Allow Ledger Manager on the device, right? So now uh, I just click both buttons. And I've done what I was supposed to do on the device. And now we can see Ledger Manager, right? All right, so uh, BitTorrent, BTT. There is no BitTorrent app, okay? So you can't, you can't store BTT on a Ledger, right? Well, not quite. Uh, let's look at Tron. Whoops. We know that we can store Tron. Come on, Rex. We know that we can store Tron app on our device. So uh, let's check out Tron. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to go over. To Tron. Right, and I'm gonna hit both buttons. Right, now I'm in the Tron wallet. But I don't need Ledger Live for this because uh, it's not compatible with Ledger Live. Uh, Ledger Live is just an interface, right? You don't store anything in Ledger Live. We store our <laughs> cryptocurrency on the blockchain. The private key is stored on the device. The Ledger Live is simply an interface, okay? but it doesn't support Tron. So we need to use Tron. Uh, there's lots of different ways to look at Tron. 
But uh, if you want to store it on the ledger, you need to use their interface here. We'll go over here to Tron. And then we'll go over here to Tron Scan. Now Tron Scan is another interface. I don't store coins in this Tron website. The Tron website is merely an interface to the private key that I have stored here. And you can do, you can do it in uh, the Tron Link uh, browser extension or the ledger. Or you can import a private key or whatever. But we're going to use ledger, right? So we go to ledger. Let's put this thing back. And you'll see here a little bit about how this guy works, right? Do, do, do. I'm trying to get it. There we go. I'm going to choose sign in to Ledger, right? And it wants me to verify the address. Look, I got this little uh, arrow here. It means press that button. All right, there's the Tron address. All right, let's go over here. And it tells me to approve it before I can see it. Okay. But there it is. All right. So a little a little wonky, right? But we've done it, right? So now we can click this button and log into Tron. Now, that wallet is now reading the balance based on the private key I have stored on this device, right? So you can see there's there's the Tron balance. And lo and behold, there's some BitTorrent down there, right? So, if I have BitTorrent on an exchange, what do I do? I simply send it to this Tron address. Now I'm going to click on that. It's just uh, about it, right? Whoops. What have I done? Lordy me. Okay. So, all I need to do is get this address. So, I just go to, I believe it's Wallet? Yeah, yeah. So, now that I'm signed in to this Ledger device, I have all of these features here. I want to receive. So I click receive and it gives me a Tron address. Now I can send BTT or BitTorrent tokens to this Tron address and they will appear in this wallet. I know because I've done it. It works. So if you're accumulating BTT in some wallet or on an exchange and uh, you want to send it to your own wallet, this is the way to do it. Right? Now, there are other Tron-based wallets that you could send your BTT tokens to. There's uh, like a desktop-based Tron wallet, and it'll do the same thing. Now, in that desktop-based wallet, uh, the Tron is uh, stored, the, the private key for that wallet is stored on my computer. Now, and there are also iOS-based Tron wallets where you can store BTT tokens. So I guess the short answer to the question is if you have a Tron wallet, then just do receive. Get that Tron address for that, that public Tron address for that wallet, and you can send BTT tokens to that address. It's similar to an ERC20 token. Uh, BTT, I believe, is a TRC20 token. TRC10, pardon me. Uh, the BitTorrent BTT is a TRC10. 10 token, like which means it's a Tron sub token. All right. Uh, I don't have any BTT on okay, any exchanges. So uh, actually, uh, let me check. Okay. Let's have some fun with this, right? It's not hard to Let's see if this works. Holy moly. Can't believe it. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have a Tron wallet over here up in the top there Tron wallet all right I gotta look at it for it to open and I have some BitTorrent token there all right so why don't we send that BitTorrent token some of it to this uh, wallet so whoop, from the phone base wallet to the ledger base wallet so what do we need to do first thing we need we need that address right so uh, let's hit receive and look at that, a QR code. Isn't that cool? Let's check out the phone here. All right, now uh, let's go to uh, send. I'm going to hit send up there. Uh, what am I going to send? Let's see if I can make this thing work. Wait, let's go back. 
let's just I want to make sure that I'm in BitTorrent. Okay. Oh, it's not going to let me do it that way. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, maybe it'll change in a minute. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hit send. I guess it wants the address first. Okay. I'm game. I'm going to hit that QR code reader. All right. Boom. There. I just scan the address that my ledger-based wallet is showing me. No, I think you just get... Uh, okay. Save as a contact. I guess I have to do that. Okay. Mm, okay. I'll just call it Ledger X and hit done. Okay. All right. Now it wants me to send, right? So what am I going to do? Uh, I'm just going to do a single token. And which token do I want to send? Well, what did we say? We wanted to send some of that BitTorrent, right? I've got 3,742. So how much do I want to send? Let's send 25%, right? And uh, good luck. <laughs> good luck. I hope this works. All right. So there we go. We've got the transaction all set up. We're going to be sending to this ledger-based wallet. Let's submit the transaction. It's going to confirm with my face ID and get really happy. All right. Now, uh, the guy, uh, the, the question was, where do I, how do I store my BTT? I already had it stored in this phone-based wallet, but uh, we're just figuring, we got to move it. But the idea here is that we send it to a Tron address. This is not a BTT address. It is a Tron address. So uh, let's see. I think what will happen is you'll see like up there, you'll see like a little green uh, indicator that says I've got a new transaction coming in. And uh, when that happens, we'll all jump for joy. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then we'll kind of keep an eye on that uh, BTT balance to see if uh, it uh, goes up or not. Whoops. Okay. My phone, uh, I've, if I forget to put my phone on, uh, turn auto lock off, whenever it goes into auto lock, it interrupts me. So let's put that to never so we can just kind of get it out of the way. Uh, all right, we'll wait and see. All right. We might, uh, need to refresh. I'll try it. Um, it says application is ready. So let me do a refresh here. And then it's going to ask me to log back into the wallet again. It usually does. All right. And I'm going to go through that same thing I did earlier on the ledger to get in. And hey, check it out. So uh, there's more BTT in there now. Uh, it went up by about 900 or whatever we sent, right? So that's how we store BTT. We have to store it within a Tron-based wallet. And we send to the main public Tron address of the wallet in order to get it there. So we could have done the same thing if you had BTT on Binance. You know, you saw my address, send me some, and then I'll, you know, I'll give it back to you after I get it, right? But that's it, right? BTT is a TRC-10 token. It's a sub-Tron token. Uh, but you guys are talking about things that are more interesting. Okay. Okay, so we did the transfer. The more features these hardware wallets gives it, the easier it will allow the hacker to get access. Just saying. Yeah, we want to keep it simple, right? We don't want to add too many bells and whistles uh, and uh, points of attack, right? Keep it simple. Maxwell's equations. I'd recommend those with ledgers, treasures to also get something like a crypto steal or any other number of metal storage for the 24 word recovery phrase. Good idea because uh, we've talked about recovery phrases. Uh, the recovery phrase is a human readable format of a uh, private key. Uh, and you can use it to restore a wallet uh, if uh, the original wallet gets damaged or lost, uh, stolen, whatever. Uh, if you have that uh, recovery phrase, the 24-word recovery phrase, 
you can gain access to the wallet on a new computer or a new phone or however you want to do it. So, and if someone sees your 24 word recovery phrase, they can easily gain access to that wallet from their own device and empty that wallet out, right? So in essence, that wallet is, is that 24 word recovery phrase. That is the most important part of the wallet. People always ask me stuff like, aren't you afraid that Ledger's going to break? Uh, what if Ledger goes out of business? Uh, what if you lose your Ledger and Ledger goes out of business? All that kind of stuff. Nothing, none of that matters if I have a 24-word recovery phrase. The 24-word recovery phrase is uh, Bit39 compatible so that I can restore to a different wallet using that 24-word recovery phrase and or a different Ledger. Let's say thanks, Mixie. It's only polite. <sighs> Come on, Rex. Okay. All right. For my eyes only. Okay. All right, so uh, what Maxwell Equations is recommending is a crypto steel, which is a metal, like uh, it's it holds your 24-word recovery phrase uh, in a waterproof, uh, no. fireproof thing. Pretty cool, right? So you take those 24 words or 12 words, I think it would has two sides, right? So we can hold the whole 24 word recovery phrase. And then you can store it somewhere safe, right? It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool way of sort other than just writing it down on a piece of paper and, uh, you know, keeping it, uh, folded up in your family Bible or wherever you manage to keep it. Um, a little more, uh, solid, right? Now, uh, you can also store, uh, a recovery phrase on a flash drive uh, on, in a text file on a flash drive. Now there's this whole, oh, you, you might be, you know, somebody might be uh, uh, monitoring your clipboard and they'll steal it if it's in your clipboard or, you know, I'm, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, the boogeyman might be under the bed, right? But in general, if you're, if you got a clean computer and everything's safe yeah. and you got antivirus and all that good stuff uh, and no one has hacked you, then it's pretty safe when you're setting up a wallet to cut and paste that phrase into a text file and put it on a flash drive and keep that flash drive separate your, from your computer, right? Uh, another way to do it is to use an encrypted flash drive, you know, like a flash drive that you've, uh, like, uh, what's this, Veracrypt is pretty good at that, right? So there's a lot, and then you can store that encrypted flash drive uh, somewhere safe and even if someone finds it they can't open it because they don't have the the encryption key the password that opens it up and you can create multiple copies of it and keep it in different places at your house send it to your mom and your brother uh, you, know, you can do the same thing with the paper too you know you can like write your recovery phrase on paper and stick it in the back of a picture and send that picture you know the family picture to your mom and she hangs it on her wall and 50 years later you know you say hey you know uh, you know there's a recovery phrase back there for a bunch of bitcoin i i i stored the bitcoin in the wallet and then i destroyed the wallet but i saved the recovery phrase right that's basically cold storage right? so recovery phrases are cool and crypto steel is cool Yeah, and uh, Scott Lee pointed out that if you print out your uh, recovery key, that you might uh, it might be stored in the uh, memory of the printer. And if it's a Wi-Fi printer, it's possible that someone could jack it, right? So there are lots of uh, you know there are lots of points of attack. So uh, you want to make sure you're running a secure network and that you've got a strong password on your Wi-Fi network, that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, in the you know, when in the long and short of it, the the safest, most uh, 
low tech way is to write it down on a piece of paper. Yes, you can. Right? But it, it's still showing on your computer screen at some point when you're setting up the wallet. Or, uh, you know, uh, just put it in the crypto steel and don't write it down anywhere. It's just in the crypto steel. But yeah, printing it, cutting, pasting it, that kind of stuff. Leaving it in a text file on your desktop is not a good idea. Emailing it to yourself is not a good idea. Storing it in Google Docs is not a good idea. Uh, there's all kinds of bad, you know, storing it on your Microsoft OneDrive is not a good idea. Unless maybe it's in an encrypted file, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, there, there, it's a, it's a big subject area. Uh, okay. Anthem William May is here. <laughs> Hi, William. <laughs> William, uh, I think you uh, mentioned uh, the last time here, uh, you're mainly involved in real estate, but that you have uh, a book that mentions a Bitcoin being used uh, in uh, lieu of... Uh, what do they call those things? Uh, see, I don't know anything about real estate. Escrow, right? In lieu of an escrow account, right? So, uh, and I think I had uh, found your Amazon page. William E. May. Uh, I don't believe that's you, William. Is there more than one William? Ah, here we go. Real estate. That's right. Why is it not? I can't seem to get to your page. Maybe if I do it this way. It was William J. May. Yeah, I believe this is your page. Here. That's it. There we go. Boom. I did it. Uh, so I would, you know, check out some of William's stuff. Uh, he's a very successful real estate uh, agent in L.A. And he's got books. So uh, more power to you. I wish I had the uh, wherewithal and the patience to sit down and write. I've tried it. I'm not very good uh, at the... I can write, but I just don't have the discipline to do it on a regular basis. I wish I did. So kudos to you, William. And William is a uh, drops by quite often. And did he ask me a question? Good evening, sir. Do you have a video on how to set up coil? Okay. Uh, coil. Whoops. What is coil? I mean, a coil is a coil, right? There's a band. Huh. Uh, I don't know if that's it. No, that can't be it. This. Is that it? No, Um. Huh. Well, the short answer is no, I have not done a video on how to do it. I don't even know if I'm in the right, if I'm in the right area. Uh, so uh, my someone mentioned, uh, you know, I was talking about storing BTT. What is my analysis on BTT? Um, I was an early user of the BitTorrent platform. Uh, as, uh, there was there was one there. Uh, There was another one though. Views? Is that it? Is that what I'm looking for? There we go. That's the one. See, I used to use views a lot and I would download stuff, right? And the problem with, uh, and it's an app, right? You download the app and then you run the app 
and it connects to the internet and it shares with other people and you download files and then if you keep those files uh, you know in views and you keep running views then other people can use the file that you've downloaded uh, to help when they're trying to download the same file right so it's it's kind of a decentralized sharing type thing the problem with views and BitTorrent is that uh, there's what they call leechers like when you go on there and you download uh, you don't really want to keep your computer on 24 7 so you immediately turn your computer off after you've downloaded your file or worse you immediately you know you just delete it from views uh, and store it somewhere else and don't share it with anybody right but you continue to stay on views and download things all the time right so uh, the BitTorrent people uh, are uh, Justin Sun, Tron, bought BitTorrent. And the idea with uh, that is that there's this new cryptocurrency, the BitTorrent token. And the idea with that is if you are on, and I'm on views here, sorry. If you are on BitTorrent and you are downloading content and you keep it in the app, and you keep your computer on, in other words, you seed, which is share your file with others, you are rewarded with BTT. And that is supposed to be an ecosystem uh, where you can earn BTT. My take on that is uh, it's going to take you a while to earn any uh, usable, what well, I want to say usable amount of BTT or... Uh, amount that matters uh it might be cool to like buy other stuff within that ecosystem kind of like the way brave works uh but yeah with brave uh you're only making like uh five to ten maybe 20 bucks a month using their browser BitTorrent would be kind of similar unless maybe you're big into it and you're downloading 24 7 and you've got a mega server and you're sharing lots of content and trying to earn a bunch of BTT. But, I mean, BTT is a sub-Tron token. So let's talk about Tron. Uh, very high uh, circulating supply, very low price, right? Uh, I can, anyone that's uh, invested in Tron in the last couple of years is probably pretty disappointed because Tron is less than two cents, right? So what does that make, make BTT? Uh, less than a penny so uh, my take on it is at the moment it's uh, pretty much a waste of time uh, you know you spend more electricity uh, and uh, internet bandwidth than to justify the return of you know a few thousand of these BitTorrent tokens but I you know maybe in seven years or next year or next week or next month uh, the BitTorrent token will okay. go to the moon and it'll be worth like five bucks a token and we'll all be millionaires, but I don't think so. So that's my take on it, right? Could be worth something someday. Might be worth your time and effort. It's free, right? They just give it to you if you have Tron in your wallet. So uh, it is something that is like, passive income. You don't have to run, uh, you don't have to use BitTorrent to earn BTT. All you need is a Tron wallet and they just give it to you periodically. But the the, the ultimate game plan is that people using BitTorrent will uh, earn BTT and then they, they can like buy and sell content with each other. Okay. Just do not, okay. So you can have multiple crypto steals. Uh, hey, let's go, bro. drop the crypto steel and all the letters get loose. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Bro, I got like the first three notes. Hey, guys, hey, guys. Okay. Bitcoin more compact, maple leaf one ounce gold equals approximately 10 Bitcoin. Okay. 
Oh, he he. Uh, William is saying that he he dictates. So uh, you know, if you get that down, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I dictate. Uh, you know, I uh, my job is dispatching, and uh, I dictate all my text to the drivers. Uh, the one thing is, it makes it easier and quicker than having to to call a person to give them you know a job. Uh, a few times a day because every conversation you know hello how are you i got a job for you okay goodbye thank you it's easier just to text and say hey so and so has a run are you ready they say yes i say thank you they say i picked up i say great they say i dropped i say wonderful they say i'm done i say great that i just texted but i just i, I dictate my text but every now and then it, it it mangles what you're saying so you have to have patience even for dictation uh, and then, uh, if I don't keep my log, uh, like I'm out and about or whatever, I can always go through my text history to look at all the runs that I've dispatched. So it's it's a, a clear cut record. So anyway, that's just me. Uh, I got my Tron off Binance yesterday and put it on the Exodus. But what about the airdrops I've gotten from BTT? I think Exodus supports those airdrops. Uh, you can, you know, that phone-based wallet that I was showing you, uh, that supports the BTT airdrops. Um, that Ledger wallet, I believe, gets BTT airdrops too. So uh, a lot of Tron wallets support those airdrops. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's got 75 million tokens, so he's no slouch. Uh, it could go to 25 sats at least. So, okay, yeah. I was talking some, you know, trash about BTT, but I was not talking about someone holding millions of them. I was I was talking about me, who's only holding thousands of them. Uh, I have never managed to hold or earn any tokens for seeding. Uh, just go there all the time since a year ago. French economy, Mr. Bruno said on September 12th that French authorities won't tax crypto to crypto trades, but will tax when cryptocurrencies are sold for fiat. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty big uh, news story uh, coming out of France. They, uh, I saw that on CryptoLark earlier. Let's try that. I'm just going to pull it up. All right, so that's the title is that they want to block Libra, right? That's the bad news. If you want to call it bad news, if you're into Libra, most pure cryptocurrency enthusiasts don't really care much for Libra, in, uh, except for the fact that it sort of brought some, uh, some publicity to the whole cryptocurrency market. But in addition to that, let's see where he talks about. No, I think this is mostly about the Libra. Ah, here we go. France won't track uh, tax crypto to crypto trades, which is good news for someone like me uh, who funds the with Bitcoin and then uses that Bitcoin to buy other cryptocurrencies. Right. So uh, when you do that, uh, you know, you're creating taxable events with every trade. So uh, especially back in the day when I was like I would buy Litecoin, I would transfer it to Binance because it was fast. And then I would convert it to Bitcoin, and then I would use the Bitcoin to buy ADA, and then I would transfer the ADA. So I was like, you know, but I was never fiating out. But in the U.S., those are all taxable. Yeah, France is proposing that if you're going to uh, buy cryptocurrency and trade cryptocurrency, as long as you're not cashing out, they're not going to tax you, which makes sense to me. Let's say I buy a bunch of ADA and then next, uh, you know, in three years, it's worth a lot. And then I cash out. That's sort of like I've realized a gain. And, you know, I get it. You know, I, I, I should get taxed on that. And but then I that makes sense to me. Right. If I sell all that ADA for 10 grand, I should go ahead and pay the taxes on that 10 grand. Just like I earned it. You know, I'm a good citizen. That's fine. But what sucks is that when you're just moving you know, you're swapping one crypto for another. They want to tax you on that. It just seems excessive, right? So France seems to have the good idea on that. Did I get blurry? 
<laughs> Scott. Am I non-blurry again or am I blurry still? Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> we're going to try to log into Binance, right? And see what happens with Binance when we log in, right? Because we've uh, passed the deadline, right? So let's uh, log into Binance and see what happens. Can I get in or can I not get in? Uh, or is it, it's, I should be able to get in. Whoa. I'm locked here. Let me uh, unlock this. This is my master password. You know, I'm, I'm thinking it might be easier to have a shorter master password, but it keeps you sharp, right? And it's the only one you really need to remember. All right, so let's uh, do our. All right, so uh, we were told that uh, when on September twelfth, anyone from the U.S. would be uh, blocked from tr depositing and trading on Binance. So what I would assumed, what I would see, is and I don't know why there's I don't really have anything in here. Uh, and I, I don't know if these are in alphabetical order or whatever. But let's uh, let's just do that so we can see them, right? What I assumed was that all of these would be dim, right? So why can I still deposit? It looks like I can, right? And then over here, uh, I should not be able to trade because I'm in the U.S. My IP address is clearly uh, in the U.S. So I don't know. Maybe it's a glitch. Uh, but we were all told that we're not allowed to deposit or trade after the 12th. But we should be able to withdraw. I get that. And I don't think that the withdrawal will ever be dimmed at all. I think a lot of people are worried that their crypto, crypto holdings will be stuck in Binance. So we've all been clamoring to empty out our Binance accounts uh, just in case. But here it is, uh, September 13th, and I'm still able to log into Binance and make a deposit. Now, uh, okay, I don't even know what that is. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so it looks like it's still working. Love from India, thank you. So Tron airdrops follow where Tron goes. My BTT and WIN tokens are still on Binance. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that most of the major wallets support those airdrops, right? Uh, just having a Tron address usually is enough. Uh, for, I, I mean, I used to get all kinds of airdrops on my early Tron wallets. I don't, I don't really keep an eye on it as much as I should. But uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's check. Boo, play harder math. Oops, here we go. Where are we here? Wallet. Um, yeah, when I tap these, I don't get uh, transaction histories. What's up, buddy? Can you get my toys for me, please? Your toys? What toys? On my shelf. On your shelf? Yeah. Why don't you ask your mommy about that one? No. Come on, buddy. I can't leave right I now. Actually... Aww. <coughs> so, as you can see, I got a whole bunch of, like, uh, airdrop kind of coins. Um, this BitTorrent. I wish I could figure out how to see my transactions. Is that what this is? Okay. Uh, so let's see. I got 10 zoo. I got a transfer. These are all transfers. Um, some exchanges. Okay. There's a transfer access. Uh, deep cloud. There's a little bit of BitTorrent coming in. So uh, there's some cyber coming in, which I don't know what that is. Um, you know, I play around with this stuff. I, I guess at one point I froze some, whatever. But uh, this is a pretty decent wallet, the Tron wallet. They actually have a desktop version of this wallet, which I did a video on. 
So I'm pretty sure that they all these Tron wallets support those airdrops. Yeah, and airdrops are cool, right? Money for nothing. <laughs> Good night and love from India. That's cool. Why? Why, Rex? CG is Chinese. That's why. <laughs> uh, okay, so, but the idea is that, uh, you know, we're not allowed to trade on Binance anymore. Uh, Binance is going to cut off anyone from the U.S. Uh, it doesn't appear to be cut off right now, but... What uh, So, there's nothing, I don't have anything in Binance to worry about that much, right? So uh, why don't we play with the ledger a little bit? I bought a little Bitcoin on uh, with the Cash App earlier, so uh, we'll uh, do some transferring from there. So let's put it on my uh, Ledger Nano X. Right. So the first thing we want to do is uh, let's get out of Tron because we were in Tron, right? I'm going to use see that little arrow. I'm just going to use the button to, to navigate to quit, right? Single button navigates over. When I get to quit, I can hit both buttons and get out of the Tron app so that I'm at the uh, home screen of the device, right? And so we're going to move some Bitcoin. So let's go back. See, you can hold so many apps on the X. It's awesome. Bitcoin, Digibyte, Ontology, Monero, you can hold everything on here. Alright, so I've managed to find my way back to Bitcoin. I'm going to hit both buttons. And now it's ready, right? I don't need to do anything else at the moment. Okay, Alright, so now let's uh, go to the Cash App. Okay, after this, that gives you and I've got some Bitcoin in there. So uh, let's move this Bitcoin over to the ledger. So we'll uh, open up our ledger live here. Uh, and I don't need the manager, right? It's, it's, ac it's waiting. It's somehow I left it in manager mode. So it's waiting for me to navigate back to the dashboard, which I don't really need to do right now because uh, I'm about to move some Bitcoin. Oh, uh, in addition, I should point out, this is this synchronization thing is really bothering me I don't know why it's just been happening for a week or two now and it just won't go away now you can make it sort of go away temporarily if you go to settings and go to help and do a clear cache and if you do that clear cache it will auto uh, synchronize or force synchronize the entire wallet doesn't delete anything it just uh, sort of uh, clears the cache. All right. All right, and if we go back to accounts, you'll see that everything is kind of resyncing. And it will eventually, they'll all sync up, and then it'll say synchronized up there, and I won't see that ugly red non synchronized error message. But it always comes back. Every time I launch it, it's back again. So I don't know what's up with Ledger. It's kind of irritating, but it does not prevent you from sending or receiving cryptocurrencies. So there's really nothing to worry about in that sense. All right, so we want to drop some Bitcoin into our Ledger-based wallet from our Cash app. So uh, we'll go over here to the Bitcoin native. Let me move this here. I'm going to go to the C there. Oh, it's so nice and green. All right, so Bitcoin native. Let's do a receive, and uh, it wants me. It it takes me to the receive window, and the Bitcoin account is already pre-selected. So I'll just hit continue. Now, as you just saw, we already moved. Uh, we entered the Bitcoin app, so it's uh, got everything there. Now it wants us to confirm. All right. So what that means is you look at your device. Not yet. All right, it's still application ready. So let's hit continue. There, it's showing me that address of the wallet and it wants me to confirm that on the device. So we can all look at my address on my device and match it to the address that's on the Ledger Live screen. 
Now, uh, you see that little arrow? It means I need to advance to the next screen with a button. I can advance all the way to reject or I can come back to approve. When I get to the approve, I'm going to hit both buttons and you'll notice on the screen that uh, this X appeared, right? It's going to allow me to dismiss the window if, it, if I want to. But I'm not going to because I need this window. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, let's bring this guy back up. All right, so we're going to scroll down a little bit. And I want to withdraw Bitcoin from this app. So I'm going to tap withdraw Bitcoin. And I'm going to slide this guy all the way over. I'm going to withdraw it all. Kind of, I'm kind of in the way, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry. I heard there's a Tetris reference. All right. So now I want to withdraw. I'm going to tap withdraw down at the bottom. And it pulls up the scanner. So what am I going to do with the camera of my phone? I'm going to scan that Bitcoin address. And there you go. So that address has been autofilled in my cash app bitcoin wallet let's confirm that and then it wants my pin again i don't know why i can't use face id for this it would be cool but whatever oops try not to crash the computer while this is going on initiated the withdrawal of uh zero zero four eight three six bitcoin we're done with that app <laughs> All right, we can get this out of the way. Well, wait, Laura, I have a bat for you. Uh, so uh, we're looking for another transaction to come in. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that did that. <laughs> I guess I could do this if I wanted someone to send me something. I don't know how I did that. Hey, it says the beats per minute is 11,000. That was pretty cool. Ah, okay, up there in the corner. So I guess I could go into a store and show, or I could go to my friend and show him this. Say, hey, buddy, send me some cash. You can actually yeah. send cash this way, too. That's what it's for, Cash App. All right. Uh, but you can also send and receive Bitcoin with the it Cash App. It's pretty cool. Stars. Wait, no, no, no. Turn off flashlight. No, wrong button. No. Oh, my daughter is having fun over there. Now, it won't be too long before uh, that synchronize button will say that it's yeah, not synchronized. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so it came in, right? So we see September 13th. Uh, we see, uh, oh, that was weird. Uh, didn't it say like 4936 earlier? I don't know. I have to rewatch the video again. But it uh, looked like I made a little money on that one. I don't know. Is Bitcoin going up? Is Bitcoin going up while we're doing our live stream? Let's see here. Let's check it out. What is this? Uh, well, it's about the same where it was when we started. So anyway, I guess that was kind of a glitch. That was so easy. All right, let's get this out of the way. So there we are. So now we've got more Bitcoin. That's pretty cool. So uh, before I, uh, I'll, I'll look at some more questions and everything, but I wanted to uh, point out that I watched the Crypto Lark earlier. And if you go up, I believe the live stream, uh, there's a Crypto Lark card on the live stream, right? So if you go up to the corner, <laughs> the top corner and, chew, and hit that little I, you'll see my cards and crypto lark's channel is on there and uh crypto lark had a really nice video earlier wow that's pretty cool every time i go to the uh <laughs> every time i go to youtube uh i get distracted right i always end up watching a video that i really wasn't planning on watching uh this one uh create the life of your dreams with passive crypto so it's pretty cool. I'd recommend this video. Uh, he just posted it not that long ago. Uh, great channel. Uh, you might end up watching him instead of me, but uh, he's that good, right? He doesn't do a lot of demos the way I do. That's why I try to like do you know step by step explanation of moving things from wallet to wallet. But I love listening to him talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin news. He breaks it down. 
Uh, so anyway, let me go uh, see what people are asking, if anything. Uh, any fee for the Cash App Bitcoin withdrawal to Ledger? Um, I don't believe the Cash App charges you anything to withdraw. Uh, they charge you a very small merchant fee when you purchase the Bitcoin. Less than Coinbase. Um, I believe it's like one something percent. It's very low. But a lot of people have told me that they think that the market price of Bitcoin on the, the cash app is uh, higher than other exchanges, that they have an inflated market price of Bitcoin, and that's where they make their money, right? They, they're cheating us by giving us the wrong market value of Bitcoin when we make our purchase. But uh, to me, uh, it's a very cheap, easy, quick way to buy Bitcoin. And they don't charge you when you withdraw. They, But you do get... Uh, when you move Bitcoin across the blockchain, you do incur network fees. That's built in to Bitcoin. That's how Bitcoin works. So you are going to incur some blockchain fees when you move your Bitcoin from one place to another. But I don't believe the Cash App charges you a fee, uh, their fee for a withdrawal, which is not the same. Uh, most other cryptocurrency exchanges do. Like Binance, if you want to withdraw from Binance, you get a small fee charge. So, I, I don't know. I, I may be wrong about that. Yes, I am in Michigan. And the Cash App, I believe, well, I know it is in the USA. I don't know if it's anywhere else. Uh, Cash App is pretty big, though. But it's a quick, easy way to buy Bitcoin. We that's interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't really say about. Oh, that's it. Uh, whatever. I guess you have to sign in. But um, license carries password. Yeah, I don't know if it's worldwide or if it's only in the U.S. To be honest with you, uh, I just use the app. So I know uh, I'm based in the U.S. A lot of you guys watch me from other countries. So I apologize if, uh, you know, I talk about some cool thing that you guys don't have access to. Uh, <laughs> I live in Michigan. Yes, I moved to Michigan. Uh, cut my expenses in half, basically. And we enjoy this area. It's really, it's nice. Uh, I'm from the Midwest originally. And uh, we just got tired of L.A. Too expensive to live in L.A. And I don't know. There's just a lot of baggage that goes with living in California. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, Muddy, Muddy Funstar thinks that the Cash App may only be in uh, the U.S., um, so let's see. Is I, I was just hoping there might be a question. Uh, Rex, would a VPN connection have a positive or negative effect on your Binance connection? Um, well, uh, the connection in general, I think you, it depends on what kind of internet. If you're talking about the speed of your connection, uh, it might, uh, make it slower if you've got a really really fast internet connection the you know you're only going to go as fast as the servers of your VPN so uh, you might see a de degradation in performance but uh, not necessarily right if you got a fast internet connection uh, you know your VPN is probably going to feel about the same when you go but the idea here is that uh, let's say um, you're, you're going to try to bypass any uh, IP location checks, right? Because uh, if you sign into Binance from using a VPN, Vi uh, Binance will say, oh, uh, hi, you just signed in from a different IP. Uh, but they'll probably let you. Other cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase will say, oh, you just signed in from a different device. So you need to confirm it, and they'll send you an email or whatever, and you got to confirm it. 
they usually will allow it. Uh, so, but uh, it will look like you're coming from somewhere else, but you're still logging into your account. So if it's you uh, and you're a verified customer, they, they will know that you are, you know, that your home address is somewhere else. You may be on vacation in Denmark or whatever when you log in, uh, but uh, it'll be harder and harder for to use VPN to circumvent these types of regulations. But, you know, the short answer is uh, Binance is going to be blocking certain countries IP wise, and you might be able to get around that using a VPN. Uh, whether you'll have a faster, a semi-slow, or whatever. You just play. It's not that cold. Uh, it's been cool in Michigan, but it's uh, been hot, too. It's st We're still, you know, we're still in fall. I mean, we're actually, we're still in summer. Uh, fall doesn't start until September 21st. It's late summer, so but we're still getting hot days. I think today, where I'm at, it was like uh, high 70s. But, you know, out in L.A. where I was, I think they're still in a heat wave over there. <laughs> all right. So uh, I was going, you know, I don't know if I have time to do all that. Let me just uh, talk a little bit about Trust Wallet. Um, I did some videos on Trust Wallet earlier. So Trust Wallet is a an iOS based wallet, and it is uh, the official wallet of Binance. Uh, it's oh, Binance bought it not too long ago, but they are an independent uh, developers. They developed this wallet, but it's iOS based or Android based, and it lives on your phone, right? When you download the app and run it for the first time, it's going to ask you to set up a wallet. And then uh, it will give you a 12-word recovery phrase. And uh, because the private keys are stored on your phone, encrypted, right? I don't know what that private key is. I never see it. But I, it's there. It's stored on the phone in encrypted format. And then you write down that 12-word recovery phrase. Very similar to that 24-word uh, recovery phrase of the ledger, right? So you write that phrase down on a piece of paper and then you store it somewhere safe. And if you lose the phone or you delete the app or the, the, you drop the phone and it breaks or you drop, you know, it, it falls out of your pocket into the lake or whatever, uh, you've always got that recovery phrase to restore your wallet to a different device or the same device if you have to do a reset or whatever. So it's a very versatile wallet. And as you can see, it holds Binance coins. So I withdrew some Binance coin from Binance earlier. Uh, actually did a video on it. If any of you out there are still worried about your uh, holdings on Binance and you haven't withdrawn them yet, check out that video. I explain how to withdraw Binance coin into your own wallet. And the Trust Wallet is one. And then I also did uh, the Atomic Wallet see if it what it does here it's going to open wow, the I think I just opened it this is such yeah. interesting plot. oops did that work okay all right so, and I also stored some Binance coin in this Atomic wallet earlier today. So if you've got uh, holdings on Binance and you would like to hang on to your Binance coin, then you can use the Trust wallet or you can use the Atomic wallet and you can store your coins in your own wallet. The Atomic wallet is desktop. This Atomic wallet also has a desktop version, but uh, I'm sorry, Atomic wallet also has an iOS based version which you can run on your phone. But uh, I'm showing you guys the desktop version, which stores the private key on the computer encrypted somewhere, right? And it also has a recovery phrase that you write down and store somewhere safe, right? So these are non-custodial wallets. These are wallets where you control the private key and you can store your Binance coin here. 
So if you still have some Binance coin on Binance, uh, you can uh, put it in your own wallet if you want. Store it in here as long as you want. Or you can just wait until Binance US opens next week uh, and then you can deposit your... Yes, sweetheart. Uh, you can deposit... You can just transfer from Binance to Binance US Binance. Binance US. <laughs> when, it, when it comes out. All right. I don't know what I'm doing with them. My son's phone wants me to charge it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. Crypto tax free, Portugal. Cool. Oh, okay. So you withdrew your BNB from the Binance Dex using my video. That's cool. Thanks, CSI. I'm glad to know that you know my videos are helpful. They don't get very many views. As compared to, you know, uh, cat videos. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy what I do and, uh, you know, it's passive income. So I'm assuming, you know, I look at some of the videos that I did a year and a half ago and they're like, people are still watching them. So, uh, you know, that's the idea. What's a good place to trade Bitcoin? Now, that's, that's a wide open question. Well, uh, any cryptocurrency exchange... Is a good place to buy bitcoins. Um, I don't know what you mean by trade. Bi trade my bitcoin for your bitcoin, or just buy bitcoin, or uh, trade other altcoins for bitcoin. Uh, you know, you've got Coinbase, you've got Coinbase Pro, you've got Binance. Soon you'll have Binance US. There's Bitrex. Uh, you can buy and sell bitcoin using the Cash app, as I was showing you guys earlier. Um, Trust Wallet has a DEX built into it, if that floats your boat. Uh, there's a lot of decentralized exchanges where you can, uh, I think that one we talked about earlier, uh, KuCoin, right? Where was it? Well, let's look in here. Yeah, come on, Rex, where was that? Well, I can't find it. Oh, here. Non Kyber Swap. That's the one I was looking for. So that's a place where you can uh, trade Bitcoin. Kyber Swap. All right, if we take a look at that, it's a decentralized exchange where you can trade uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Oh, I don't know if you can trade Bitcoin here. Let's see. Can you? Does this go down? <laughs> It may just be an ERC-20 based only. Sorry. So this may not be the place to, to trade Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, uh, Binance, Coinbase, Bittrex, that kind of thing. Oh, thank you. Yatin ordered the Ledger Nano X from my link. I appreciate that. You think KuCoin is centralized? Okay. Uh, it looks, well, it says non-custodial, so I'm not too sure. It looks like uh, Shapeshift, which is non-custodial, but there's a little bit of centralization in the it's fact the that you have to sign up for it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but, and then also that fiat onboard thing makes it a little more centralized in its very nature, too. Because now that they've uh, partnered with those other people. Oh, that's pretty cool. Looks like you can connect with your ledger. You know, why don't we try that? <laughs> what does it want me to do? Does it want me to... Uh, please make sure. Oh, cool. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Ah, come on, Rex. All right, so please make sure that you are uh, logged into my ledger. Okay, I think it wants me to be in the Ethereum app. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. We're gonna quit the Bitcoin app. Oops, didn't like that. Let's go back. Sorry guys. All right, let's go into Ethereum and let's try again. It's telling me to enable browser support. I mean, come on, there we go. All right, so it sees that I have uh, yeah, sure. Ledger, uh, but it's the wrong derivation it, path. 
it needs the different derivation path. Because, uh, huh, let me try that. Because there should be a balance there, right? It's not seeing any of my balance. Alex! Uh, that's the one. Is it this one? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So it was a different derivation path on the newer Ledger X, right? So, okay, I'll, I'll import this public key into their thing, right? So now they're telling me that I have a balance that I can use to swap for other coins if, if I so desire. <laughs> kind of cool. All right. Kids are getting restless. Uh, so uh, the ledger is very versatile, right? We don't need to use ledger live for everything, right? There's lots of different ways we can utilize the ledger. Many different websites uh, and wallets that are compatible with the ledger. The, the beauty of the ledger is that it holds your private keys securely, safely and securely. So there's a, a lot of different interfaces out there that are just reading that wallet from the ledger but the only way to send money out of the ledger yeah, is by pressing the buttons that's the security of the ledger for every trade you have to yeah. confirm uh, for every withdrawal you have to confirm so uh, it's a very secure uh, hardware based wallet for storing cryptocurrencies yeah. so anyway uh, that's uh, enough for this week hopefully I uh, was responsive, more responsive this week than last week. <laughs> Don't forget I have a live stream every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me again next week for Live from Michigan and throw out your questions and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my abilities. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.